e-learning with NUT Endo Mother Science School, MENA. <laughs> Hey Angels, how are you today? I hope you're fine and staying safe at home. My name is Ernest Emmanuel, and in today's lesson, we'll be looking at something different. Last week we looked at uh, reading comprehension, and today we'll be getting more practical, okay? So get your writing material set as we uh, begin. So I'd like you to observe this picture. Observe it very well. You can pause the video, observe, and in your own words, I would like you to describe this picture. Describe this picture from what you can see, the environment, just describe it. Okay? So if, you are, if you've done that, tell me, do you have an idea of uh, the topic of our lesson today? All right. Okay. Today we'll be looking at a topic that says composition writing. What did I say? Composition writing, yes. And in this lesson you'll learn to do the following. You'll learn to define composition, identify the types of composition, define descriptive composition, and write a descriptive composition. Okay? So I hope you're ready to do all this. Okay, I need your complete attention, do not be distracted, right? Now, what is composition writing? Composition writing is the way a writer puts words and sentences to create an organized and meaningful work. It is simply the activity of writing. Yes, that is what composition writing is all about. In essence, when you put in, when you bring words together to make meaningful sentences, okay, and then you organize those sentences, you are simply writing a composition. You are involved in the activity of composition writing. Because composition has to do with what? Composing. Composing, okay? It's derived from the word composing, doing your own. So composition writing is a way a writer puts words and sentences to create an organized and meaningful work. It is different when we, when we write and then we do not, our writing does not make meaning. That is not a composition. You have only succeeded in doing what? You've only succeeded in bringing words or bringing sentences together, but you are not making meaningful a piece of writing but for your composition to be valid and original or be called a composition it has to do what it has to be organized and it has to make meaning so the when you the in, the the activity you engage in when writing when composing is referred to as what composition writing i believe we are together all right now, for us to make good compositions, for you to make good composition, there are steps you must follow. Let us look at the steps for a good composition. Number one, you must have an idea. What do I want to write on? What topic? What subject? What field of life do I want to write about? Okay, what, what, I, am I... Am I writing about myself am i writing about a particular thing am i writing about a particular place first of all you must have an idea what do i want to write okay secondly have a plan how lengthy or short do i want the writing to be how do i organize it and how many paragraphs should i use so always ask yourself these questions okay i have an idea Next, now I want to, what, how do I go about this? Should I write it in two paragraphs, in three paragraphs, 
each of these paragraphs, what points will I what, include? What ideas would I include? Or do I want it to be very lengthy? If I want it to be lengthy, then in how many paragraphs do I want to write this uh, composition? So always have this at the back of your mind. And how do I organize it? Do I organize it beginning, middle, and end? Or do I start from end and begin the middle and then uh, beginning? So always have a plan. Thirdly, take an action. Engage in the activity of writing. So for you, it, you, you can't write a good composition if you just continue sharing the idea or you're telling yourself about the idea without what? Without actually engaging in it. That is the writing proper. Don't forget, composition is simply what? The activity of writing. So you have to engage in the activity of writing. You have to engage in the writing of that idea. You understand? That plan, you have to put it into writing so these are the steps for a good composition now what are the types of composition composition is of different types they are descriptive composition narrative composition argumentative composition and expository composition these are four main types of what composition we have but for the uh, benefit of this lesson lesson of today we'll just be looking at one and which one do you think we'll be looking at from the little exercise uh, I said you should engage in initially what's uh, which of these compositions do you think we will be talking about in this lesson I said you should look at that picture analyze it and write about it Yes, we'll be looking at number one, the descriptive composition. Now, what is it about? What is descriptive composition all about? This type of writing describes something or someone telling their characteristic features and noticeable details to provide a reader with a picture in words. I want you to look at the colored words. Okay, one keyword of a descriptive composition is to describe. It describes something or someone. Okay, at the next uh, keyword there is it tells about their what characteristic features. What are the characteristic features and noticeable details? What can I see about this person? What can I see about this object? How, how, how does the object look like? How, how, what, what are those, those features that are identified or associated with that object or with that person or with that animal or with that place? Now, when you, when, when you, when you put all this in mind, it will help you in describing. By so doing, you are giving the reader a picture in words in essence in your writing you're already giving the reader pictures the, the reader will be seeing mental pictures of what you are writing in his or her mind now characteristic features are very important for example if it's a dog what are some of the characteristic features of a dog a dog barks yes a dog bites Mm, yeah, yeah, it's, that's to unfriendly persons. It bites off or to, uh, it, uh, to, to, should I say, thieves and the rest. Okay, some other features is that, yeah, a dog can also be playful, right? And don't forget the physical features of how the dog looks like. So when we talk about characteristic features and noticeable detail, you must provide it while you are writing a descriptive word composition. Now, note this. Descriptive composition provides the look and feel of objects, places, and people with as many details as you would like. Yes, when you are writing a descriptive composition, as many details as you can think of, always would, always include them in your writing. This helps uh, your composition, or this gives your composition uh, more originality, more feel 
okay when a reader reads the person will be able to identify with that particular thing you're describing even if he or she has not what seen that thing or seen that person or that uh, object but the way you have uh, succeeded in writing giving the person pictures the person uh, uh, with with much details the person will what will see it as though he or she is uh, present with the object there so that is what descriptive composition is all about all right now let's look at this Let's look at this first example. Now, if you want to describe... Oh, okay, let us read this together. Example 1. A description of a rose flower might include the color of the petals, the aroma of its perfume, where it exists in your garden, whether it is in a plain soil, flower pot, glass vase, wooden pot, etc. Now you can see this picture. This a this is a bouquet. Okay, this is a bouquet. You can see flowers, and I want you to notice very closely. Do we just have a rose flower there? Okay, I want you to, in your own uh, observation, what can you note out? Okay, what what are the different types of flowers you can see? You can see their colors. And in your own observation, this uh, bouquet is in what? Is it in a wooden pot, in a glass vase, in a flower pot, or is it on a plain soil? Yes. So now, if you're writing about, or you want to, you're yeah, describing this uh, picture, you cannot escape the colors. You cannot escape the the object in which the flowers are in. You cannot uh, escape the environment. Yes, I know you can't perceive it at the moment. Okay, you can't perceive. You do not know how the perfume of these flowers uh, are at the moment. But all the physical details you can observe, you have to include them in your writing. Let us look at example two. A description of a person might include the name, height, the size, complexion, shape of face, type of eyes, nose, all physical features, posture, hobbies, etc. Now if you want to describe a person, yes you have to talk about the person's name, talk about height, uh, complexion is a person fair or dark, size is a person fat or thin, as you can see in the picture, uh, shape of face, is it oval, is it round face, Okay, type of eyes, the bulgy eyes, round eyes, and so on, nose, pointed, flat, okay, all the physical features that you can observe about that person, the posture, how does the person work, you understand, hobbies, now the hobbies are to some of those things that the person likes to do, okay, the, those those um, features that are associated with that person, the person likes to play football, the person likes reading, the person likes eating, all those details and many more. Okay, so if you want to describe a person, you must have all these, uh, uh, you must have all these details in what in your composition. Another example a description of a house might include type of house, size, color. All exterior features, number of rooms and their sizes, interior decorations, roofing, compound, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to describe a house to somebody, you have to tell the person the type of house, the size, and so on. All exterior features involves the, the, the frontage, okay, involves the type of window, it involves the type of doors. The compound is it a big compound is it fenced is it you understand just as you can see the type of uh, types of houses we have in this picture is it a, what type of is it a castle is it a bungalow bungalow flat apartment detached semi-detached duplex and is it a hut so for you to give uh, 
a clearer picture to your reader you must have all these details in your mind in the interior do they have is the, the house is it, what kind of furniture is in the house okay and all those things what are the electrical fittings like how is the kitchen like how are the all those things are very important now look at this example a description of food might include the type of food ingredients color appearance aroma taste nutritional value and so on now if you want to describe to someone probably your favorite food your, your or a food you ate you must of course the person must know the type of food what ingredients do you think are contained in this food how, how is the physical appearance is it appealing is it appetizing okay and the taste was it delicious how can you describe the taste okay the smell how can you describe the smell the aroma where the, what how 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 was how was the feel like okay and what nutritional value do you think this food has okay when describing all this it helps uh, it gives a clean picture to your what to your reader about that particular food all right let us look at this a description of an animal might include type of animal class of animal size or physical features and characteristics food they eat and so on where they can be found and so on now you can see there are different animals we have in this picture okay we can see you can see the different animals now you cannot describe to someone or you can't tell you can't say you're describing an animal to someone when you just say it is an animal i saw an animal on the way the animal is so so, so color no first even if you don't know the name of that animal try as possible to give what detail all the details you can think of about that animal maybe the person you are describing it to would be able to do what would be able to know the animal so your from your description of that animal the person you are telling would know what animal you are talking about so physical features are very important characteristics are very important type or name of such animals are very important even the food they eat so in writing descriptive composition you must what you must put all these in what in mind for you to have a good descriptive composition don't forget descriptive composition deals with describing in details all right we've been able to look at what composition is we've been able to see the steps for writing good composition we've been able to look at the types of compositions we have and for this lesson we've been able to what we've been able to look at descriptive composition these are the aspects we've been able to do in today's lesson now I would like you to engage in this homework okay I'd like you to engage in this homework I'd like you to read this and attempt it as I always tell you be original do not let anyone do this for you okay do it by yourself do it yourself and let me see how well you've understood the lesson your friends are familiar with your school and have heard a lot about the school as a student proud of his or her school write a composition describing your school to friends who have never been inside the premises all right i'd like you to do this yourself and let's see how well your descriptive composition would come out happy engagement and happy writing see you in our next class bye